Microphone check. One, two, three. Cheddar cheese in the place to be. Silver price report coming at you. Bringing you the daily price of real physical silver. Give me one second. I got to itch my ear. That freaking freaking itches. All right. We got to give a big shout out to Don Booth out there. Follow me on Twitter. We got to give a shout out to Dumb Money Media for the retweet. We got to give a shout out to all the new subscribers out there. I know I've had a couple, uh, but it doesn't list your name. But hey, big ups to you. Big ups to all the regular viewers, everybody out there watching on Reddit and on Twitter. Let's get into it. So first, we got a sale at JM Bouillon. I think we had a sale, when was that, last week, a couple days ago? So this one is on some uh, Sunshine Mint Rounds. They're saying only $3.39 over a spot. So maybe uh, the sale is still going on by the time you see this. Rush over there, get your stack on. Let's get into these prices. This is for... January 12th, 2022, priced in US dollars. American Silver Eagle, $33.38. Canadian Maple Leaf, $29.47. Austrian Philharmonic, $27.19. And I got an update for the Austrian Philharmonics. We're going to get into that here in a second. Private Mint, $26.19. The average price is about $29.49. Spot price, $23.04. Just broke that $23 mark there again. Premium, $6.45 over spot. The daily change, the average is up $0.08. Cents. Spot price is up $0.25. Cents, and the premium is down $0.17 cents for today. Now, this is an interesting tweet. This is from Michael Sayer over on, on Twitter. Uh, he works with um, Rob Keens over at Gold Silver Pros. If you're on Twitter, he's a good account to follow. He tracks Atmex and he tracks uh, some Comex stuff. And he his visuals are really nice. A lot better than my freaking visuals. This is like a this is like a high school level freaking PowerPoint presentation I'm doing. This stuff is aesthetically pleasing. But anyway, he said uh, from 1 to 2 p.m., Atmex is in stock one tenth, one quarter, and half ounce American Gold Eagles inventory, excluding the tubes, dropped by over 75%. And I just think that is a huge, huge drop to be done in an hour. Uh, just shows you the demand out there for precious metals. So let's get into the stuff with the Austrian Philharmonic. So as, as I've pointed out before um four of the seven online dealers that are follow have been out of philharmonics this is just an example of this this is the spreadsheet actually from today again you can see the four uh blanks that is that is the dealers not having any in stock and this has been something which has been pretty much persistent since i want to say i've noticed it since late summer early fall of last year of 2021 now i was just talking about this maybe maybe it was yesterday or monday i think it was yesterday um maybe it was last week i can't really remember but i was just trying to figure out what's going on now i was thinking it was more the dealers themselves as opposed to a supply and demand issue but i just came across some very interesting information today and it does seem like it actually is a supply issue let me play this clip this past week we've had to start adjusting because of some delays from the austrian mint i wonder if you could bring that up to date on that yeah so the austrian mint has had a has been ravaged by um omicron and uh they have had to shut down uh and and you know these are unexpected delays similar to what we saw in 2020 where with the canadian mint and the u.s mint where orders were placed money was paid promises were made and the mint shuts down all right that's andy sheckman from miles franklin um i tried to do a little bit of digging i didn't i didn't go too in depth i couldn't find any news articles on it so i'm going to take him 
um, at his word. So it does seem like there is a supply issue, at least for the Austrian Philharmonics. And this is something we've been seeing just supply problems overall. We've been seeing this for a while. I mean, after after that statement, he went on to um, talk a little bit about the Britannias last year. I, I don't know if you guys remember that. Uh, some of these men, I think it was the the, um, the UK mint had issues getting blanks because I believe the blanks are produced here and then sent over overseas. Um, I believe so, but anyway, that that's beside the point. The fact of the matter is that there have been supply issues with getting the physical to where it needs to be. Whether I mean the um, uh, Andy talks about this. Um, the U.S. Mint shut down for about three months last year. He had that. You have the shutdown now with the Philharmonics. We had the issues with the blanks. You got Silver Squeeze going on itself. So this is. This is interesting, but that will explain then maybe why those. F- now I don't know why the four. De- let me let me look at who the four dealers are. Let me get my note. I got my notebook here. Um, so that's B G A S C. So that's buygoldandsilvercoins.com, silver.com, Provident Metals, and J M Bouya. Now the other um, three that I track uh, that'd be uh, gold. Uh, goldandsilver.com that's mike maloney at mex and sd bullion they they have them in stock uh so i don't know what's what's going on there has to be something with the dealers themselves maybe the three that have them maybe they stocked up more than the other ones i don't i don't really know um all i know is that this issue with the philharmonics again it's been it's been persistent since last year real spotty with specific dealers just not having it in stock um actually and, and then to add this is something that no one else has been talking about and i don't know if it's come if it's come back and this has been completely forgotten the other supply issue is the mexican libertad um they stopped making them last year and i don't know if they're making them anymore period now they claimed they claimed that it was a covid issue um yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I know I did a video on it. I, th- I think I, I, I didn't believe it that much. I gotta, I gotta, I'd have to go back and try and find that episode. I don't, and I don't title or number these episodes. So, you know, good luck on that, dude. I do one freaking every day. I got a few hundred of these things already. Um, but anyway, that's, a, that the Libertad is another, it's another supply issue. And I wonder if the Mexican men started making those again. I don't know. So we're gonna keep our eye out on this and see what's going on. But um, you know, I'm also I'm also curious to see. I wonder why a premium hasn't really developed around um, around the Philharmonic. Maybe you know, maybe these these shutdowns these of uh, the mint. Maybe it's not that impactful uh, to the supply totally. You know, maybe it's like. For example, the um, uh, uh, the U.S. Mint, where they you know they shut down for a couple months. I think they said they were retooling or something like that. Um, then they pop back online with a with a bunch of crap, with a bunch of bunch of crap, with a bunch of coins. Uh, so I don't know. Interesting, interesting. Now it makes me. I'm not. I'm this this is the part where I say it's not investment advice because it's not. But you know, it makes me makes me curious if there's a um. I wonder if there's any arbitrage that can be done there uh, with the Philharmonics. Uh, I'm just, you know, if this kind of thing persists with the Austrian Mint, will we start to see other dealers be affected? You know, and then if if you're able to, you know, pick up a few yourself, wait for supply some some supply issues to kick in. Maybe you can make a nice little nice little buck on a on a resale. Who knows? Who knows? Let's move on to some broader economic news. So CPI data came out today for December. This is a headline from CNBC. CPI data shows inflation rose 7% year over year. It's highest increase since 1982. Because I think uh, the November CPI read was like 6.8%. Now this 
this increasing in inflation it's not a surprise to anybody out there that's watching this channel uh, or that's into precious metals in fact the real rate of inflation is higher because whenever this happens i like to go over to shadow stats and check out and see what's going on there so this is the um the equations they use from 1980 john williams shadow stats i think shadowstats.com is the website but we're looking at that blue line there um and that blue line is right at slightly above 15 percent inflation so we're back at at the amount of inflation there was i believe in the 70s i think inflation was something like 14 percent in the 1970s so it was it was well in the double digits um so and it's not you know is the fed gonna fight inflation we'll see we'll see actually somebody i listened to a podcaster i follow um He's changed his tune a little bit. He went from, he, now he's saying um, the Fed will do for sure one rate hike. Uh, and he thinks it's going to be uh, meaningless. I also think it's going to be meaningless le- um, as well. Um, I'm still, you know, on the fence. We'll see what the hell they do. You know, the one the one thing, and when I first started, uh, or when they, the, the Fed first changed their tune, one of the things I said that was a good counter argument to my position is... Uh, you talk the talk, you got to walk the walk because the Fed, I think, is facing a serious uh, legitimacy problem. I don't think any, I, I don't, and maybe it's just the circles that I run in. Um, and the, you know, maybe I have, I have, everyone has their own echo chamber. I have my own echo chamber. But who out there takes the Fed seriously? I don't think anybody believes them. So when it comes to this rate hike, uh, you know, I believe it when I see it. And if, if they do it, excuse me uh if they do it it's i don't i don't believe it's gonna be meaningful they can't they can't do nothing the trap everybody knows this so anyway I, i'm not gonna rant about that i've done that enough uh i also realized i forgot to do the the freaking kick coat chart um i'm assuming we've i'm assuming we trended up hold up let me go back so spot price, the average spot price is up 25 cents today. So I'm gonna assume that the um, the nominal uh, spot price, well, obviously it had to have trended up for the freaking for the average to go up. I just don't know what to what degree because I forgot to put it there. But whatever. I'm just I'm just rambling on at this point. Uh, hopefully you guys found this helpful. Hopefully you can incorporate this into your own analysis. Until tomorrow. Peace out.